Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome again to Philippians, Paul's letter from lockdown. Before we read the next part of the text, let me thank you for the feedback that you've been sending in to us as a church, asking, can you have improved picture and sound quality? It seems that you want to be able to count my wrinkles. Well, our technical department are looking into it. At the moment, I simply record these videos using my cheap laptop with no accessories added to it. But the technical department are on to the problem. They'll see what they can do. But today, it's not tea for technology, it's tea for Timothy. And we're going to read about him in Philippians chapter 2 and verses 19 to 24. Paul writes, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. It's very clear from those words that being in lockdown has not in any way dampened Paul's enthusiasm for the gospel. He's not thinking about himself, his feelings, his problems in lockdown. He's thinking about the work of Christ and how he can support it. He sees his friends in Philippi being persecuted for Christ, and he longs to go to them, but he can't. He's in prison but he still finds ways to support them. He writes this letter and he promises to send Timothy. Now, sending Timothy was a real sacrifice because as Paul says, Timothy was like a son to him. And it prompts the question, well, why didn't Paul just send somebody else? And Paul's answer is, frankly, there isn't anybody else quite like Timothy who will put the cause of Christ above everything else. Now that, of course, is high praise for Timothy, but it's also something of a reproach on all those other Christians who could have gone but wouldn't go because they wouldn't put Christ first. Paul writes in verse 21, and it's very poignant, everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. What an indictment. Too many of them were thinking of their own safety. Oh, no, Paul, I couldn't go and get involved with persecuted Christians. That's very risky, you know. Too many were concerned for their own comforts. What? Me go on a missionary journey? Oh, I might get malaria. Hey, eat funny food over there, you know. Oh, no, no, I'm far too fond of my home comforts. Others were thinking about their convenience. Oh, yeah, they would happily gather in a worship meeting and sing, I will offer up my life. But what did they think this life was they were offering up? They weren't prepared to be inconvenienced for the gospel, let alone give their whole life. There are lots of people, then and now, who say Jesus is Lord, but they always seem to be thinking about themselves, about what's best for their own little kingdom, about what strokes their ego, about what gathers a bit more treasure on earth for them, even if it leads them further away from Jesus Christ. Timothy, however, was different. Timothy was asking, what's best for Jesus? What's best for his people? What's best for those who've never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because that's the thing that needs doing, and I'm available to do it. You see, Timothy was like Jesus, who surrendered all his rights, all his comfort, to seek and to save the lost to save us. That's what love does. Well, Paul writes, there's no one quite like Timothy. There's a real note of sadness, I think, in Paul's statement as he faces the self-centeredness of those that he might have sent. They were so zealous for their own interests, but not for the things of God. But the challenge is to us, too, not just to them 2,000 years ago. It strikes me that there's a great contrast between Philippians 1 verse 21, for me to live is Christ, 
And Philippians chapter 2, verse 21, everybody looks to their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Here's a challenge for you. Get on your knees and ask God to show you which of those two verses you're living in today. Say, Father, am I in Philippians 1.21, for to me to live is Christ, or am I in Philippians 2.21, I'm looking to my own interests, not those of Christ Jesus. Father, show me where I am right now, not where I was five years ago, 10 years ago, when I first became a Christian, I first loved you and I was full of zeal. Show me now, am I in Philippians 1.21, or am I in Philippians 2.21? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that Jesus gave up all his rights and comforts to save us. By your spirit, make us more like him for your love's sake. Amen. God bless you, friends. Bye for now.